Welcome. In this fourth lesson, we'll speak about dimensional analysis. And dimensional analysis is just a fancy way of saying converting between units. In chemistry and other sciences, we often use different type of units for different measurements, so we want to be able to go from one to the other. Here's a quick outline of how we will use this method. Number one, we will start with what you want to convert. You're going to write down exactly what you want to convert. Don't forget the units. Extremely important to put units at the back. Secondly, you'll multiply by a conversion factor. And this is simply a fraction which relates your two converting quantities. Say if you want to go from pounds to kilograms, that would be in the conversion factor. And then the way you're going to write the conversion factor is so that the unit you're converting from cancels out. And we'll have to consider what's on top and what's on the bottom to make sure it cancels out. And we'll show you an example of this here. So the first uh, example will be a, a visual example that we're not going to work out. But say if uh, you wanted to convert from two hours into minutes, you probably can do this in your head by saying, well, I know each hour has 60 minutes, so I simply multiply 60 by 2. But let's set it up using this method, dimensional analysis. You begin with the two hours. Notice we write down the number and the unit that we want to convert. And then secondly, we multiply by this conversion factor. And the conversion factor is given to us here. It is the relationship between minutes and hours. One hour equals 60 minutes. The way, and then third step is the way I write the conversion factor is to make sure that my hours are on the bottom so that they cancel out with my hours on top. And then you multiply 2 by 60, divide by 1, and that's how you get your 120 minutes. So this is a simple setup of a simple problem. Let's go a little uh, deeper and let's do some tougher problems for which you will need to set up this method. So here we have an example of converting 5.5 miles into kilometers. So we're converting from a non-metric unit to a metric unit. Our conversion factor is given to us, and you don't have to memorize these conversion factors going from non uh, to metric. So you'll just be given to them, you can use them. Step number one, recall, is to put down what you want to convert. We want to convert 5.5 miles. Don't forget to put the units in. I'm going to shorthand it with just mi. Step two said multiply by a conversion factor, which is essentially this relationship here. And then the way we write the conversion factor is we put on the bottom whatever's on top. So since we have miles on top here, I will put miles on the bottom. That's so they can cancel out. The second side of the conversion factor will have kilometers. You always have one portion of the conversion factor on, on the bottom and one portion on top. And the numbers just come in from the conversion factor. So we have 1.6 for the kilometers, 1.0 for the miles. And then you'll have to multiply this out. So take out your calculator and multiply, do a quick little multiplication. You'll do 5.5 multiplied by 1.6 divided by 1. So 5.5 multiplied by 1.6 essentially. And you get yourself 8.8. .8. The units, you make sure you include the units, will be kilometers. And this will be your answer. Now, we will have to consider significant figures. So if you began with two significant figures, you'll have to make sure you, can't, you don't end with more than two. So we have two, and we ended with two. So that's how uh, we convert. Let's do another example. Let's do an example that's more, uh, a little more difficult using, this time, metric prefixes. If you recall, we talked about these centimeters and meters and so forth. So the same thing, three steps. First, you put down what you want to convert. 156 centimeters. Don't forget the units. Then you multiply by a conversion factor. And this conversion factor is set up so that on the bottom goes centimeters. So they have to cancel out. This is very important. On the top then would go meters because we want to go from centimeters to meters. And now we have to know the conversion factor relationship. So if you remember that a centimeter is a hundredth of a meter. So you can either say that one meter is 100 centimeters, or you can say that one centimeter is 100th of a meter, or 0.01 meter. Either one of these would work. You can use either one of these conversion factors. I think it's easier to use this one. I think it's a little more logical. If you have a meter stick, you have 100 centimeters in it. 
and this then will go into our conversion factor. So a meter is 100 centimeters. What you end up doing is dividing 156 by 100, which is the same thing as moving the decimal place over to the left twice. But go ahead and do this in, cal in your calculator to make sure you get 1.56 meters. So you uh, see that the centimeters cancel out. We no longer have centimeters because what's on top cancels out with what's on the bottom. By the way, just uh, as a clarification, this number here is on top because from math, recall that any number is actually that number over 1. So there's a 1 on the bottom of this fraction. And this will help us out later. Our answer then is 1.56 meters. So hopefully that makes sense. Go ahead and do, uh, pause the video and do this practice problem on your own. And then let's uh, go on to this one, which actually involves uh, two conversion factors. This is going to be a two-step conversion. The question is, how many centimeters do we have in 25 feet? The two conversion factors that are given to us relate feet to inches, and then inches to centimeters. So as we're going from feet to centimeters, we'll have to take two steps. We have to go for, from feet first to inches, and then from inches to centimeters. This is a uh, one of these two steps. Uh, sometimes you can have three steps, you can have four steps. You can do them individually, so two separate problems with one step, or we can combine them together. Here I will show you how to combine them together. So begin, as always, with what we want to convert. In this case, that is 25 feet. Next, multiply by your conversion factor. Because we know we're going to use two conversion factors, let's do this twice. Multiply by both conversion factors. Let's set this up with the units first to cancel out, and then we'll put the numbers in. So since you begin with feet, we'll have to put feet on the bottom. Our first conversion will be from feet to inches. We'll use this conversion factor. So we'll put inches on top. Our second conversion will be from inches to centimeters. Notice feet will cancel out. And then, since I have inches on the top here, I want to put inches on the bottom to cancel out. You always want to put these units on opposite sides in order for them to cancel. So I'll put centimeters on top. And notice my inches now will cancel out. And I will end up with centimeters. You always want your answer to be on top of the last conversion factor because you are converting centimeters in this case. Let's go and fill the numbers in now. We have a foot equals 12 inches and we have an inch equals 2.54 centimeters. What's left is to do the calculation. So multiply 25 by 12. Take out your calculator. 25 times 12 and then multiply that by 2.54. And you should get yourself 762 for the answer. In this case, centimeters put in the unit. Now, we have to use significant figures. And in these problems, what will limit you is however many you begin with. And so since we begin with two significant figures, we actually want to work it out to show two significant figures we have to round 762 down to 760. We have to make the 2 insignificant by changing it into a 0, and it rounds down. So 760 centimeters is our answer. Now you may ask, well, isn't uh, this the limiting factor? Don't we have a 1 here? Uh, it turns out that this is an exact conversion. One foot has exactly 12 inches, or 12 inches is exactly one foot. So this won't limit you. You can say that this is 1.0. Same thing with the inch usually your exact numbers will not limit you. So you essentially will go by however many you begin with. So go ahead and try a practice problem on your own. Pause the video, try a practice problem, and uh, that will do it for video number two.